Why hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 6-1B on Monte Carlo localization or Bayes filters, in particular particle filters. So our learning objectives once again are to introduce Monte Carlo localization, describe how we, you can, we can use Monte Carlo localization for global or local localization, as well as to solve the kidnapped robot problem, and to also describe how Monte Carlo localization is represented by, do, by particle filters that represent our posterior belief. Recall that the content for this course comes from the text Probabilistic Robotics and the website probabilisticrobotics.org and the text is written by Sebastian Thrun, Dieter Fox, as well as Wolfram Burgard. If you want to know more about their work, please visit probabilisticrobotics.org. So let's look at what Monte Carlo localization looks like in a one-dimensional hallway. So assume we have a robot that can only travel in one dimension along the hallway. And initially the robot is uncertain about where it is. So if you notice here, the probability of any certain state is pretty uniformly distributed and it's represented by these particles at the line at the bottom. And so when the robot first starts, before it does any motion model, any sensor model, makes any movements, this is what the particles look like. Then in the next step, the robot senses the wall. So pr the probability of a certain observation given a state is that the robot has sensed a door. So the height of each particle in this figure now shows its importance weight where we see that the sensor data has found there are three locations where there are doors. So our particle filters are taller at the locations of the doors. The set of particles is identical to the ones in the previous figure. The only difference is the measurement update um, is based upon the importance of the weights. So if you look here that you have the belief in X where it's the normalization factor, the probability of Z given X for the previous belief. And then that is weighted by the probability of Z given X for the previous belief and the current belief or it's alpha the weight times the probability of Z given X. Then the robot starts to move. So that blue arrow now represents our motion model where the robot travels. And then as the robot travels, the uniform weights may happen again because until it makes another sensing uh, um, point, it's not going to be able to update the weights. So we once again have our posterior belief, which is just our integral, the probability of state given the motion model and the previous state times the belief of where the robot was before. So the particle set after resampling and after robot motion is shown in this figure, and it leads to a new particle set with uniform distribution, but with an increased number of particles near the likely places. So now what you see is it's once again uniform, but there are now darker spots, which would represent the robot moving away from the first door, the second door, or the third door. So now once I add my sensor data in, um, I now have my belief, and I have my weight based upon my belief. So it's alpha, the probability of Z given X. And I now have my new measurements that are signs a non-informed uniform importance weight based upon the robot sensing it's at a different door now. So now notice that going from the first door to the second door using the motion information and the sensor information, I now see that the second one is actually darker because now the cumulative probability mass is centered at the second door because that is now most likely the location. And now the robot moves again. And so my particle distribution goes back to being uniform where we once again have a darker cluster, although uniform, because that's the most likely location for the robot. And until I take another sensor reading, it's back to having this uniform distribution and it won't be weighted again until I get to the next door. So that is an example of our particle filter algorithm. And so in summary, what happens is you sample the next generation of particles using the proposal distribution, and then you compute the importance weights by looking at the target distribution and the proposal distribution, where you replace unlikely samples by the more likely ones so that it actually converges and localizes. 
So the MCO algorithm represents the belief by a set of M particles, as we've said before. Then it samples from the motion model using these particles from the present belief as starting points. Then it uses the measurement model to determine the importance of that particle. And then that initial belief is found by randomly generating new particles and then assigning an importance factor to them again once I take another sensor reading. So here's what this algorithm would look like in terms of pseudocode. You have a particle filter, which has a set and a normalization. And then as you iterate through the samples, you're going to sample index J of I from the discrete distribution given by a weight. And then based upon that state, you're going to find the probability of that state given the previous state and the motion model. Then based upon the sensor readings from that state, you're going to compute the importance weight. And then you're going to update your normalization factor. And now you're going to insert that into your set of particles. And then at the very end, you're going to take all of your particles and normalize them by the weight. So once again, what we've done here is we have found the belief that the robot is in a certain state by using the normalization factor times the probability of Z given X, which is our sensor model and integrated that with our motion model, which is the probability of X given the previous state and U times the previous belief. So you're going to draw from your previous belief to get your particles. Then you're going to draw from the motion model in order to get your belief of where it could be. And then you're going to weight it by the importance factor based upon your sensor data. Then the weight is found from the target distribution divided by the proposal distribution, which is given by for our target, it's going to be the normalization factor times the prob probability of ZT given X times the probability of XT given X and U and the belief of X of T minus one. All of that divided by our proposal distribution which is our previous state data or the probability of X given X, the belief times the belief X of T minus one. So that's our target divided by our proposal, which basically becomes proportional to the probability of Z given X T. So here's another implementation of Monte Carlo localization where we have a robot path measured in the upper left figure. So that basically shows how the robot was driven. And then the lower path shows sets of particles based upon the robot's sensor readings as it moves around by using Monte Carlo localization, where we have predicted sample sets at different points in time as shown in the dark values. And the resampling steps are shown in the lighter gray here. So we have the particles dark and then the resampling in gray. And then the means and covariance for this are shown in the upper right corner. So once again, as the robot is moving, we're showing how if we're using importance weighting, it should be getting closer and closer to localizing. So as the robot moves through the path, we see that the mean and covariance as it turns, but it should be getting smaller as with respect to the mean. So the MCL algorithm for landmark based localization is we have a robot trajectory and the results from the true trajectory are shown by solid lines. And then the landmarks are detected by the thin lines and the covariance and samples are after resampling to show how the robot could localize with respect to landmarks. Here's another application with a robot in an actual office environment. This robot was equipped with array of sonar range sensors and used a beam range finder model. So these images detect those particle sets after 5, 28, and 55 meters of robot motion. So notice up here, when you first start, the robot could be anywhere along this area and even some into the um, office area. The robot's actual position is now somewhere from here as the start, and it's now up in this corner. So once it kind of detects it's in the corner, notice that based upon importance weighting, I now only have three, four possible locations, one, two, three, four in the corners of the office. But obviously the one where it actually is, is a little bit larger. And if I increase the total number of particles, I can increase the accuracy of my um, approximation. And the robot's final position is that it exits this um, little corridor that looks like a square and it does localize in that corner. 
So the robot is operating in this environment. It's 54 meters by 18 meters. And after it moves, it's globally uncertain, but it does start to converge in the corner of the map because it's, it knows that it's in one of the four possible corners. And then finally, after it moves from the corner into the hallway, it's able to completely localize. And this concludes lecture two on Monte Carlo localization and particle filters. I hope you're watching, I hope you're enjoying, and I'm hoping you're rewinding and watching it multiple times and taking notes if you need to take another look. Have a robotastic day, and I look forward to seeing you back again.